Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben, you here for another modern video. Today's video is supported by Peter K, who donated to see their modern mill deck in action. So we played this in, well, not this exact list, we played a similar list in Legacy about a week ago and what did pretty well with it. Um, I'm really excited to see how these cards like Tasha's Hideous Laughter and Fractured Sanity feel in modern. Now, I'm not, you know, a modern expert by any means, but kind of the word that I'm getting on the street is that Mill is all over the place in leagues and is actually pretty formidable. Um, one of the last times I played modern, I got absolutely fucking clowned on by Profane Memento. Whenever a creature card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, you gain one life. So I was, I was playing some deck that couldn't do a lot of damage, it had a ton of creatures, and my opponent was just like milling 13 and gaining an absurd amount of life. Um, and it was it was just awesome. So uh, essentially you have eight crabs to start things off as your initial mill, and you do have some controlling elements. You have Surgicals, Fatal Push, Drown in the Lock, and Counterspell in order to kind of like buy you some time for these powerful three drops to get online. In the Legacy version we were trying some Chrome Moxen to just cheat things out and get to those three drops sooner, and the modern version is trying some interaction instead. Uh, there is also the very powerful Crypt Incursion. Exit all, exile all creature cards from target player's graveyard. You gain three life for each card exiled this way. Um, I have played with this card a few times in various formats, and while life gain doesn't seem all that powerful, like just a raw life gain card, uh, Crypt Incursion sometimes gains you, you know, an entire game's worth of life in a single card, uh, and it's pretty disgusting. Notably hanging out in our sideboard here is a copy of good old Luris the Dream Den, who is not actually banned in Modern despite being banned in Legacy. Uh, the same thing is true for Ren and Six as well. Now, the last time I played with a Luris deck in Modern, I do not believe I cast the Luris the entire league, um, so we'll see if Luris does anything here. Um, humorously, I guess it kind of exists to bring back crabs, which honestly is pretty hilarious to me. This is how far the mighty have fallen. Um, I don't think I have too much else to say about the sideboard. It's relatively targeted. You know, we have the ensnaring bridges to lock up the creature base matchups. We have a decent amount of graveyard hate and the profane mementos for those matchups where we really need to gain some life like burn. Um, let's just hop directly into a league and see how it feels. If you want to try out this deck yourself or, you know, you want to get one of your own decks on the channel, check out the video description to the links to everything. And please consider subscribing to the channel for Legacy Modern and Vintage content five days a week. If you're already subscribed, throw me a like. It's the easiest way to support my content for free. Let's battle. Okay, my opening hand has three milling cards and two lands, as well as one piece of interaction. This seems fine to me. Not every hand is going to just go and have, um, you know, like a crab to start things off. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I think I'll just go Watery Grave Pass. I don't think I need to uh, pay any life here. Yeah, that's a Sacred Foundry. And uh, that's an Archive Trap. All right, what are we playing against? Uh, okay, just some sort of four-color control-ish sort of thing. That's fine. Now I know. All right. My opponent should definitely fetch now. If I had more archive traps, I would have just played them immediately. All right. Okay. I, I think grab is better than ground in the lock. I just want to get all of the value I can out of my cards. So let's uh, set this up to mill. Save targets, always yield. And I think I don't fetch now, because if my opponent has like a lightning bolt or path to exile or something, I don't want to miss out on my opportunity to mill more. Nice. So I'll go ahead and fetch here. Um, I'm not expecting like recurring land destruction, so I'll just grab the other watery grave. And I'm not gonna hold up fatal push. Yes. Um I'll grab an island. Because I need triple blue with this stack, oddly enough. Alright, what do you have? Expressive iteration. Hey that's a that's card draw. That's less work that I have to do. I'm digging this. Grabbing a oh another expressive iteration went to the exile zone. Sure sure sure. I wonder if my opponent has like Merktide Regents or something. 
Probably not, but I'm not familiar enough with the format right now to know whether or not that's the case. Okay, so I could Visions of Beyond, but I think I just want to resolve some of my cards here. I think Tasha's is going to mill more than Fractured Sanity. Let's find out. The opponent's at 27. Eh. What did we hit? Oh, there's like Omnoths. Okay. That's what's going on. That's That explains the fourth colors. Okay. So for the future, Fractured Sanity is going to be better than Tasha's on average versus this deck. I probably just clipped most of my opponent's win conditions, by the way. Man, my opponent is going to have just, like, so many weak cards in this matchup. I hope they don't randomly have, like, Endurance. Okay. Omnoth resolves. Can I cause one of my permanents to leave play? Flash, do I even want to? I can just Fractured Sanity mill my opponent for 14. Like, it's probably fine to leave this, right? Probably. I feel like it's okay to just leave that. This leaves my opponent with three cards left in library. Yeah. Cast. Okay. Hello and good luck, opponent. Yeah, I'll take the four. That's fine. Uh-huh. Yep. Sure. Yep. Sure. Oh, they're getting aggressive. I mean, I, I, I respect it. They're making a, a real effort at killing me. There's a wall of omens, a solitude, a wall of omens in the graveyard. Crypt Incursion gains a little bit of life. I think I'll just draw three cards to start this turn off. That's a crab. Crab, crab is lethal. Just play crab. That mills three. Uh, that kills my opponent. Yep. I'll go ahead and just end the turn there. G G's. Okay, how do I want to sideboard? Do, do I even need to sideboard? So like, my opponent is going to try to kill me by attacking me with a four four a few times. Um, these crypt incursions aren't exactly great. Um, yeah, like I'll I'll keep the fatal pushes. Those can kill Omnoths. Surgical Extraction seems kind of medium. I, I don't really know that I need to sideboard here. Like, do I just want to play Soul Guide Lantern because I can use it to cantrip and make Snapcaster Mage slightly worse? Do I want to play Set Adrift to just answer a Planeswalker that sticks? Do I want to play Ensnaring Bridge to keep Omnoths from attacking? It, it feels like all my options are kind of medium. Like, I could board in more Surgicals, but I don't exactly think the Surgicals are, like... A plus primo anyway. Now, if I board in Ensnaring Bridge, Lurus is off. That probably doesn't matter. Play some Ensnaring Bridges and go down on Surgical. I could, I could maybe even just cut all of them. And play like a set of Drift. And one, one Soul Guide Lantern for good luck. I don't know, maybe one Surgical is better. Okay. Um, I'm a little far away from casting Fractured Sanity, but the rest of the hand is okay. I don't think this hand is worth mulliganing, despite having some problems. My opponent did not go up to a bajillion cards. Every once in a while when you're playing Mill, your opponent just, like, sideboards in all 15 of their cards and says deal with it. Alright. I think I'm just gonna play Naked Crab, and if my opponent removes it, my opponent removes it. And if they don't, great for me. Otherwise, I'm just like playing a Soul Guide Lantern out nakedly on turn one. Oh, this is a very good draw. Totally happy with this. All right, target you. Save targets. Always yield. It begins. Um, no, I'll, I'll pass with Drown in the lockup. Okay. Oh, they are shocking. What does that mean? Just like cantripping? Oh, that is that is literally just drawing a card. That's that's fine. That smells to me like they need to hit land drops. Okay. Sure. 
I'm not gonna like cycled fracture sanity here. I will I will get to the point where I can cast that card. I can even consider casting it right now. I am going to take my crab based value here. Ah. Okay. So without those surgicals, apparently Mill is popular enough where this is tech. Now I know. Alright, so I'll have to I'll have to do a little bit of extra work. Damn, I wish I would have known that was a thing. Because I could have played Soul Guide Lantern out on a previous turn to play around that. Alright. Say Levy. Alright. Oh, there are endurances as well. Uh, and those were not in the deck in game one. Okay, so apparently Mill is a uh, is serious public enemy. Alright, and there is a force of negation. So this matchup got significantly harder in the both sideboard games. Alright. What awful thing do you have for me? Do you have like a Jace or something? Alright, you have an Omnoth. Sure. Well, under other circumstances, excuse me, my visions would be on, but it's not now. So I can just drown in the lock and destroy this. So I think I am going to get cute here and just use my mana as efficiently as possible. These aren't randomly indestructible or anything, are they? No. Let's go one, two, do that thing. Pick up an island. Right. That's fine. You can have the life. The life is not relevant. Now let's blow that up. This graveyard has 12 cards currently. I'm not quite there with visions, but I should get there on my turn. Oh, shocking. What's five? Oh, sure. Okay, that's fine. I mean, this card's good, but maybe not the best against me specifically. All right. Let's go land. That puts opponent up to 16 cards in graveyard. I okay, will go ahead and play the Soul Guide Lantern. We are going to uh, get rid of the in an endurance from the graveyard, rather. I want those things looping. I'll cast a Fractured Sanity. Okay, there's the Kozilek. I will exile each opponent's grave. Oh, shit, shit, shit. I wanted to cast Visions from Beyond. Please do something, opponent. Damn it. I got so excited by the ability to get rid of that that I cost myself two cards. That's that's fine, uh, but like that's that's a costly mistake. I think I'm still favored here, but I'd be a lot more favored with two more cards. All right. Okay. Now my opponent can bounce the crab if they want. Oh, they're just plussing. Okay, sure. I don't know how many copies of Endurance my opponent is going to have. I also don't know if they are going to have like one or multiple Eldrazi. I don't know how deep down that sideboard rabbit hole they went. Okay. There's the Teferi Plus. Um, I'm going to play a Field of Ruin and then just let it hang out. I've got crabs to think about, but I still have two lands. Yeah, so my, my opponent can plus these Teferis, but these Teferis, like, don't really just kill me. They make life bad for me, but I don't know how many... Oh, do they have a Shark Typhoon? A Shark Typhoon is legitimately scary. I can just draw, like, a Fatal Push or something, and then it's no big deal, but... Uh, it's a 6-6. Six, six. That's a 4-turn clock. That's something I care about. Ball. Goodbye. Okay. I mean, that's fair. Guess I could have fatal pushed this land and played around that. Um, that was not something that I was expecting. Yeah, my mind went like, I am playing around Spell Pierce and Flusterstorm type effects, so I am good. Narrator's voice. He was not good. Alright, so I go to 13. Sure, sure. Plus away. And then untap your lands. I guess I will just cycle this right now. Yeah. Um, I guess I play a land so I can play this around a mana leak. This is probably lethal if it resolves. Yep. GG.
Yeah, so we uh, we beat an Eldrazi this game. Um, not in the most traditional sense. Um, but I do want to point out, this is a great game that shows you why why format knowledge and matchup knowledge is, is so important. Like, if I was more familiar with this deck list, I could have known that I needed to play around Veil of Summer, and I could have played around it. If I knew more about the this deck's sideboarding options, I would have known I needed more answers to Kozilek's. Like, I'm very thankful that I had one answer remaining to Kozilek in my deck um, that I kind of kept in uh, as mostly a coincidence. Um, but this was a, this is a great round to show you, like, the difference between a novice pilot of a deck like myself and a, a master. This time, I'm the novice. All right, uh, we are playing a Lurus Mirror of some kind. I will go ahead and keep this hand. I have I have some crabs. Also, um, at la last game at some point, I definitely could have put the Lurus into my hand. Um, just honestly, I forgot about it. <laughs> okay, so we're probably not the same deck. What do you have over there? Okay. Oh, a dismember. So we're probably playing against some sort of shadow deck. All right. Let's go uh, crab. Vista. Fetch. Island. All right, we need to always yield to that. Crab. I've got an archive trap, which is awesome if my opponent searches, but they've already searched once. I don't know how likely it is that they'll do it a second time. Um, my opponent's graveyard um, confirms that they are Death Shadow, by the way, just in case you weren't paying attention to that. I see Death Shadow and Monastery Swift Spear in there as threats. Um, I'm guessing Dragon Rage Channeler uh, is a thing that exists too. All right. So Archive Trap is on. Um, this can't take Archive Trap, so... Yeah, you can you can get crab number four. And a death shadow, sure. I'll trap ya. Opponent gets a card back from their bobble. It would be awkward if I drew a blue 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 thing. I did not. Alright, so let's go land. And now I need to do some stuff. I need to save targets and always yield that. Alright, good stuff. I think I'm just gonna blow up the death shadow now. Like, there are counter spells my opponent can have, and I would rather just take it off the table. Because as long as I stay alive, like, it, it is not going to take very many cards to kill my opponents, and my fetch lands are even kind of scary. So why would my opponent shock themselves? Um, maybe expressive iteration? Oh, sure, do your do your swift spare thing. Like a Gurmag Angler? What's, what's two mana here? Okay, a drown in the lock. For sure. That destro destroys my crab with the bigger butt. I will take two. That's fine. It'll be 15 for me. Get milled. So I'm getting to the point where, like, a fractured insanity is basically a kill. Um, this is a deck where some of my, like, graveyard based life gain stuff might be kind of good. Will not be blocking that. The crab is too valuable. Yeah, it's it's fine if I just take one. All right, all right. Let's let's refuel. You fly or anything? No, you don't fly or anything. I think my opponent's just basically dead. All right, so there's there's some mill, and here's some mill, and then here. 14 more cards, which is lethal. Hot damn. Things were starting to get scary. Okay, uh, just quick look. There's no counter spells here in game one other than three drown in the locks. Okay. Incinerian Bridge is kind of cool here. My opponent's threats get real big. I think I'll play Bridge. I don't know that I want to play like surgical or soul guides or anything. I think I, I think I want bridge. I think profane memento and crypt incursion are also worth considering. I don't want these surgical extractions. I don't know that I want actual factual counter spell. It's it's something that could get stuck in my hand for like ensnaring bridge based reasons. Snapcaster mage as another push is fine, but I don't know that this card is necessary in any way. 
So that can get me these three. And then do, do I want to play more expensive or less expensive cards? Probably less. I'm a little soft at CMC2 and a little heavy at CMC3. Seems a little weird to only board in two of these, but I'm not sure that I want to board anything else out. I could make a swap of Crypt Incursion for Profane Memento. It's like one Crypt Incursion in a game is really good. The second is not good. Um, let's go ahead and submit like this and see how this feels. We'll see if I randomly get got by Eldrazi again. Um, this hand is fine. It's a little slow in terms of like raw mill speed, but it's pretty good in terms of being able to answer my opponent's threats. I will be sad if I get thought seized and lose the crab though. Yeah, Dragon Rage Channeler is, is fine. Land crab go. Am I getting bolted? Ah, okay. 666 over here. So my opponent did board up on cards. That's fine. That means my opponent is less likely to actually actualize their game plan. So I'm I'm fine with that. I don't think necessarily that always like boarding up to the maximum number of cards is actually a good thing versus mill. Like now my opponent is much less likely to hit land drops and play multiple spells. Yeah. Th there it is, the exact same thing that I uh, the exact thing that I was just talking about. Um I think I'm going to shock myself here. The, the Fractured Sanity makes this awkward. Yes. I think I just want to Fatal Push. Ground in the Lock can get anything. Well, actually, Fatal Push can get anything, too, in this deck. At least that I saw. Unless there's a weird sideboard juke. On the off chance that I draw, like, another 3-drop, and I want to Fatal Push plus 3-drop in the same turn, I'll keep the, the cheaper one. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so that's what my opponent was thinking about last turn. It was, do I want to play the Monastery Swift Spear, or do I want to kill the Crab immediately? I don't want a Field of Ruin, my opponent's land. I'm going to do that. So I'll grab my Swamp here. Let me Fatal Push this. Alright, good stuff. Grabbing the, the Swamp was for ease of use for me. Eh. To finish my thought... It means that I don't have quadruple blue, so I couldn't like Fractured Sanity and Visions of Beyond in the same turn cycle, but, you know, can't have it all. Um, I think I will cast at least one of these now and just cycle them into other things. I think I will cast the second. All right. I'll make my land drop here, um, but I won't play a fetch land specifically. If push comes to shove, I can hard cast this uh, Archive Trap. JK. Okay. Okay, this is this is enough Field of Ruins. Am I supposed to just keep these for grabs later? I guess I'll play one more. I'll hold, I'll hold two lands at any given time. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so this this is the price my opponent is paying for boarding up to so many cards. Yep. Like, yes, they have made my plan harder, but they are they are just floundering around. Alright. Crab, Prismatic Vista, Target You, Save Targets, Always Yield, Batch, Island, 15 cards in there now. Um, I can't activate Field of Ruin, it requires a non-basic land. Okay, now I can get a Field of Ruin activation. Sure. Is this enter tapped? No, it just puts it onto the battlefield. Okay. I think I'm going to go ahead and do this now for the sake of my mana. Okay. Oh, opponent only has one basic land, huh? That's a shame. All right, so Field of Ruin, take another three cards, drown in the lock, and blow that up. Good stuff. Ah, we have gotten the, uh, the skilled from... Uh, the, uh, the opponent. That's that's my permission to fucking start clowning on you. <laughs> like, you, you did this to yourself. Wrong. Very skilled. That'll make them mad. Alright. Dismember away. Alright. Fractured Sanity. 
There goes another 14. Yeah, sure. That's nice insurance. And I believe it is just correct to play those out. It theoretically means one EE could answer two bridges, but I don't think cards are safe just chilling in my hand. Um, this is safe chilling in my hand, though, in case I draw another crab. Oh, I have this fucking Luris. One, two, three, Luris, crab, land. Where are you, Luris? Oh, right, I can't Luris because of the ensnaring bridge. Yep, that's fine. Uh-huh. I do have a line here where I can double Field of Ruin their lands if I want. Nice. Crab. Land. Always yield to that. Then I'll pass the turn. Again, I don't want to be the first to blink when it comes to my lands here. And if my opponent decides to use EE to blow up Crab, they also blow up two Death Shadows. Which I suppose potentially was an argument to not play out a second Death Shadow. Okay. Got the end step here. Go ahead and Field of Ruin away that Watery Grave. Mm, that's fine. Okay, and then we have gotten the concession there. Luckily, I am so skilled and was able to navigate this matchup well, while my opponent didn't cast any spells because they sideboarded up to 75 cards. <laughs> okay, um, round three opening hand has basically no ability to mill, unless my opponent searches. I think this one is a mulligan when I'm on the play. Uh... Well, this hand's not bad if I draw lands. And it's really bad if I don't. This might just be better than going to five, though. I'm going to go ahead and keep this, and I'll pitch one of Counterspell or Fatal Push. I think Counterspell. I wish my game one hand here was better. Because I think a lot of people have respectable plans for Mill, based on what I've seen in these first two rounds here. So I think winning game one before your opponent has all sorts of answers is kind of important. Ooh, I'm gonna play against some sort of like Dead Guy Ale style deck, because I would be down for that. Hit me up with some sweet Stoneforged action. Could also be that like Grief Ephemerate deck. Back grab. Alright, I drew a land. That is quite good. Oh, I th oh it is the Grief Ephemerate deck. I'm going to just go ahead and fetch an island now so that I am holding up Drown in the Lock. Let's persist. Return target non-legendary creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. A negative one, negative one counter on it. Oh, that's dope. Hmm. Okay. Alright, so here's the second land drop. So we could see something like a persist, and then I would Drown in the Lock that. Alright. Are we just going to stare at each other? We're just going to stare at each other. I think I don't play this. I think I just hold up this Drown in the Lock. It sure seems like I'm going to need to counter something in this turn cycle. Alright, so you shocked yourself, and then did nothing. That was a mind game. It worked. It's like, I'm not taxing your life total. Okay, what do you do? A3 life, sacrifice this, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, activate only as a sorcery. Okay, so I can just fatal push that, and that's fine. There's a cool degree of redundancy here. Cast. Attempt to destroy this card. That's some cool art, too. Okay. You lose two life until end of turn. When it dies, return it to the battlefield tapped. Sure. Neat. All right. So, grab, land, target you here, save targets, always yield, on burial rights, Archon of Cruelty, ETBs are attacks, do stuff. Okay. So this is, hold on, that is just straight up a reanimate? That card's really fucking good. I just... And it has on Earth? What the fuck? Huh. That's dope. 
Um, let's kill that. All right, um, we're gonna need some graveyard hate this time around. I mean, we've we've got some, um, but my opponent's deck has a lot of redundancy. Yeah, there's the Archon. I will sacrifice a creature, and I will discard a card. Unfortunately, yep. <laughs> oh, jeez, and blanket. Okay, this is this is cool. Uh, um. Wow. Okay. Okay, so the rebound, I believe, is optional. Yep. So I take six here, plus this trigger. Uh, so that's, uh, that's no bueno. And I don't think, a, like, a single Tasha's is going to kill here. I, oh, I can't even cast that. Oh, I'm, I'm just going to die. That's a collective brutality. Okay, upon this deck is super dope. All right, how much how much interaction do I want to board in, and like on what angles do I want to fight? Because like there's the early game like grief ephemerate stuff I need to worry about, and then there's the late game archon of cruelty stuff I need to worry about. I want some number of old guide lantern ensnaring bridge crypt incursion. I can consider stern dismissal, but I don't think I'm going to do that. If I have eight cards I could board in. I probably won't board in that many. I don't think I'm going to hold up Counterspell Mana a lot of the time. I don't think I want Snapcaster Mage. I'm not sure if I want to fight on the Fatal Push front if I'm going to bring in Ensnaring Bridge. Like that, because of that, um, that two drop priest thing, whatever it's called, um, Fatal Push is attractive. But I think if I eliminate the graveyard of something that's scary, that thing also becomes less scary. So I think my starting point is the three Ensnaring Bridges. Sorry, Loris. And I think I want these two, and now it's a question of, like, do I want Soul Guide Lanterns as well? Or is Soul Guide Lantern better than Surgical in some cases? I'm unsure. It also could be that, like, three Crypt Incursion is too many, and I want some cheaper stuff. Yeah, I have a lot of stuff at three. Yeah, maybe, maybe I do this. Let's try something like this. I'm obviously figuring things out on the fly here. I would like to play first, and this will be a keep. Uh, I'm very happy that I have access to blue, blue, blue in the opening hand, because we do have double fractured sanity. If I didn't have access to triple blue, I might have to think whether or not this is actually a keepable hand. All right, the grief gets evoked, exiling on burial rights. See if my opponent has an ephemerate. Goodbye, drown. Oh, they do. Oh, wait, no. But when it dies, it comes back. Yeah, I mean, that was that was pretty damn good. All right, so... I think I just want to do all this stuff while I know it resolves. And, like, I know my stuff doesn't um, get got. But this does mean that I can fuel my opponent's graveyard and make their turn better under some circumstances. Okay, there's a Stoneforge Mystic Package in there, too, uh, which is dope. I put an Archon of Cruelty into their graveyard. Um, so I could I could probably effectively lose the game this turn if that hits play. Yeah. Maybe I didn't board heavily enough on the graveyard hate. Uh, I'm going to discard Fractured Sanity and keep my land so that I can keep the Ensnaring Bridge dream alive. Because uh, that's probably how I'm winning this one now. All right. I'm not technically dead, but I am very badly burned. I'll, I'll be at one, so I will not be able to fetch with this Prismatic Vista. I can also just die to a Collective Brutality draining me. That's, that's no good. <laughs> Goodbye all of my resources. Uh, if Mill is popular, opponent's deck seems like a baller choice. Okay, there's a there's a good measure Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, they did not use the ability. I will uh, I will concede. I was just thoroughly fucking bested this round. Opponent's deck is sweet. Not even mad. Okay, um, so round four. I'm on the play. I have a weird hand. I have double archive trap, which mills for twenty six cards, and then I have a visions of beyond afterward. As long as my opponent fetches, this hand is great. And if my opponent doesn't fetch, 
Zan Super Sketch. I'm going to believe in the uh, the modern mana base, though, and assume that my opponent fetches. If my opponent doesn't fetch, I probably just have to cycle Visions of Beyond. Yeah. Um, play Island Go here. Alright, so you search, and then bad things are going to happen to you. What the hell is this? Alright, Mardu Triome. Sure. Archive Trap View. Okay, there's a lot of colors there. Archive Trap View. So what is this general? Expert from Monocolored. Whenever you cast a, a multicolored spell, create a 4 4 red and white golem. Oh, that's dope. Okay. The graveyard has 20 or more cards in it. Yep. I draw three. Um, I should probably surgically extract something. I guess. I don't know. Maybe I don't care. Like, maybe my two life is more valuable. I can kill two different things here. Now I'm gonna... I'm gonna surgically extract tribal flames. I don't think I want my opponent to have that degree of reach. <laughs> Alright, there's a couple shardless agents in their hand. Just a few. Alright. Got a feel for what's in the deck now. I've taken a lot of the reach. Not all of the reach, but a lot of the reach. The bad thing here is that I have no more mill. Um, this is a matchup where I will very much appreciate the life gain that I have. Alright, so this is basically a 5-5, right? Domain, power and toughness equal to the number of basic land types among lands you control. Yep. Alright, I have to do something super unfortunate here and fetch a black source. Not, uh, not particularly happy about that. Specifically because then I don't have blue, blue, blue. Oh no, I fucked up. I should have played Field of Ruin. Field of Ruined one of those lands and then used that land to get to cast Fatal Push. Yeah, that was that was suboptimal on my end. I thought about it for like 0.5 seconds longer. I would have figured it out. Like, obviously I did. Um... I didn't check for whether or not my opponent had a basic land, but if they didn't have a basic land, then I, I could get value that way. Yada, 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 yada. Yeah, I, I messed up that turn. And it has pretty big implications for the future as well. Okay. So this turn, I can go ahead and Field of Ruin. I'll pull up the Tri Land. Get an island. Yeah, okay, they didn't have one. This has protection from monocolored, means that I want to use this. Alright. I have recovered from my previous mistake, at least to some extent. Oh, baby. Alright, so let's go Ruin Crab. And I will play a Field of Ruin. That's worth mill three. I'll now go to my opponent's turn, and then I'll take out their Stomping Ground. Um, but they still have Lightning Bolts in their deck, so they could remove my Crab. Yep, and that's why I didn't just crack this immediately. Get it. Alright. There's some more mill. I'm going to pop out this Luris just so that I remember that it exists. One, two, three. Fetch. Womp. Cast Luris. I don't care if it gets, like, lightning bolted and I lose out on a little bit of theoretical value. Like, my opponent has 11 cards left in deck. I'm good with where things stand right now. Alright. Ruin Crab. Polluted Delta. Patch. Got a tapped land. No. Cast. Fatal Push. Target you. Send in the Lurus. Alright, and there is the there is the concession. Um alright, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit scared in the mid-game, but uh Clutch things out come the late game. Alright, uh, Ensnaring Bridge looks great. Um, Crypt Incursion and Profane Memento are both probably good. I don't think I want Surgical Extractions. There's not any one specific card that I really need to get rid of. I don't think I want Counterspell and Snapcaster because they are slow. Um, this means I need to board out two more cards. I suppose Visions gets worse. 
if I start using Crypt Incursion to gain life. Maybe let's trim those, keep my removal spells. Um, do I want Stern Dismissal? I don't think so. The Field of Ruins did way better this round than I thought they did. But, sorry. The Field of Ruins did way more work than I expected them to do, like, in in the first few turns. Like, I thought it was something that was going to be a cool option, but it ended up being just absolutely game-defining. Okay, I have a bit of a weird opener. I have very good cards in hand. But this hand is quite slow, in that, like, I have four different three drops, and I don't have three lands. Uh, my turn two play is probably just cycled a Fractured Sanity. I don't know to what extent my opponent can easily beat Ensnaring Bridge if I'm also doing other things. This is a little clunky, but I think I'm going to keep it. I think this hand goes okay enough of the time that I can keep this, but my opponent's deck is probably pretty fast. I think I'm most scared of like a Noble Hierarch start where they can just like start doing very scary things on turn two. All right. I did not want to draw another Fractured Sanity, obviously. Noble Hierarch is also something that uh pretty damn good against Ensnaring Bridge. Yeah. You have Domain. And, oh, and Ignoble Hierarch. Sure, sure, sure. Gonna grab a tapped Watery Grave here. Oh, no. Stop, stop drawing three drops, please. Alright, so my opponent currently has zero cards in Graveyard, which means Drown in the Lock can't remove anything. That's, uh, that's bad. When I kept this hand, you know, I was thinking that I would probably end up, like, drawing either a land or a crab to help make the initial turn's more reasonable. Alright, they are going for the search. <clears throat> so, I do now have the option to drown in the lock a mana dork and save one point of life this turn. I don't think that's better than cycling the Fractured Sanity. I am, like, if I am going to win this game, I need to get... I need to do stuff. I am not currently doing stuff. Oh, if they discard a card here, I can actually drown in the lock this thing. Holy shit. Thank you. Thank you. That just, them discarding a card just saved me seven life. I cannot overstate how important that was for me right there. Yeah, oh well, okay. Oh, there's more. That is a lot of hierarchs. Alright, um, I think I need to try to hit my land drop here. I think I am, uh, just stumbling too much. Yeah, okay. I'm probably gonna die. So I I missed lands on three draw steps plus a cycle. That That is what it is. I, I think if I got some number of that, like, it's a real game. Uh, you know, they love you so it goes. I think at this point, um, my ensnaring bridge is just too slow. Tasha's Hideous Laughter also exiles rather than milling properly, so that means my Crypt Incursion isn't exactly the nuts. Yeah, that's a bit... Alright. Yeah... I'm gonna cast that Tasha's Hideous Laughter mostly to get... Oh no, I can't even do that. Can't even do that. Alright. I guess this one was a mulligan. I... I think I like how I have boarded. I'm going to run this pack. Okay, this is a no lander, so this one has to go back. Um, this is a one lander. How good is it? Honestly, not great. I, I'm worried about just missing land drops, not making it to my three drops and dying. I, I think it's better to keep a land heavy hand here. Uh, I'm going to keep this. I think I need to pitch this. And I think I'll pitch the Field of Ruin from there. Um, I I feel like I am the underdog here, though. I think prior to mulliganing, like, just in terms of raw speed, my opponent is slightly faster, but I think when I'm down this many cards, it's it's just unlikely that I'm going to get to where I need to get to. You know, we can, uh, we can maybe, like, get an ensnaring bridge. Yeah. I'll archive trap you. Oh, wow, we just took a lot of Mantis Riders off the top of the library. 
Alright, watery grave, no. Pass. This crypt incursion is a lot of life. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ish creatures. Seven life. Yeah, that that's pretty sick. It's more life if I can afford to wait. I don't know if I can afford to wait. Because my opponent will probably play like a five five ish creature this turn cycle. I don't know. Okay, that that stuff's fine. Uh yep. Land go. I'm not sure how long I'm supposed to wait on this crypt incursion. It may be that I, I'm just supposed to cast it now. I, I would love to get off another archive trap before I do so. Alright, it is a shardless agent. What are we getting? Another hierarch, sure. So my opponent kept up a land. So I wonder if that means that they have like a, a vision, uh, not a vision, sort of beyond a veil of summer. I'm going to cast this anyway. They have it, they have it. They don't, great. It would get something at some point this game. Yeah, alright. So, in response to that, I will choose target player. And I will gain a bunch of life. This is a lot of time. I'm at 46. Um, I, I think I do this now? Hedron Crab is the reason to wait. But there's other things, like Tribal Flames and such, that I dampen if I go after this now. Alright. Operation Sinkhole successful. By boarding in the Ensnaring Bridges, I lose access to Luris. And let me tell you, right now I do wish I had access to Luris. I think the existence of the Ensnaring Bridge stopping like those early 5-5s five from attacking is important enough that I board in the bridges, but like right now, like I, I would have fetched a swamp instead, and then I would have had like Luris for Hedron Crab. Alright, fetch fetch away. Okay. I'm getting hit for five as of right now. I, I do love eight hierarch decks. I, I just it makes me feel all the warm and fuzzies. Down to forty one. And I, I think I'm just jamming. Like if they have veils, they have veils, but if they don't, great. Oh, there's Chalice of the Void. That was not something I was expecting from their deck. Okay. We're up to four of those in play, which means I'll take six this turn. Alright, I'm getting tribal flamed. Pretty good. Ow. Down to 30. I will hold this land for Hedron Crab. Now, I, I basically need to resolve one spell, assuming my opponent doesn't have something like an Endurance. Okay. Each creature you control has Vigilance if it's white, Heft... Okay. You know what? I'm not going to read that card. My opponent's are, creatures are going to get some more abilities. I got it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take damage pretty quickly. All right. So I just want to blow that up, right? Yeah. Um, I guess I can do that on my opponent's combat step. Actually, maybe upkeep is better. No, combat step's better. Okay, so the reason to do it in the upkeep is Veil of Summer. The reason to do it in the combat step is potentially saving a good number of points of damage. They may just continue to attack with the Shardless Agent because it's hexproof, but... I don't know. I'd probably be attacking with both, right? Getcha. I had to do a quick uh, graveyard check. Make sure that I uh, I beat the mana value there. All right, always yield to those. All right. I guess I hold those. Taking six a turn from Shardless Agents. And I have to be cognizant of burn. Three of the lightning bolts. No, all the lightning bolts are in graveyard, but tribal flames is um, still running rampant. Still, oh wait, no, all the tribal flames are gone too. Okay, yeah, there's not actually that much reach, huh? All right, I'll take seven. That one crypt incursion was so important. All right, field of ruin, not the best here. Um, do I save this for Hedron Crab based reasons? So I've milled all the tribal. There's still like Scion of Dracos though. Oh, let's take them 
off white. Well, you know, a plains more accurately. And I'll grab a new island. Yeah, I need I need like one fractured what is it, fractured sanity? Or one Tasha's. Tasha's maybe doesn't do it. Oh, there's still lightning helixes for burn. Okay. A crypt incursion will probably just win this game as well. Oh, didn't notice Gaddock Teague in the graveyard. Alright, Blood Braid. Sure. Or an ignoble hierarch. Alright. See how my opponent chooses to attack. They have five hierarchs. Yeah, they have five hierarchs. Um they technically have the most damage by just attacking with Mantis Rider, but they can play around removal a little bit by attacking with all three creatures. They lose out on one point of damage, yeah. Alright. Uh, this one is gonna come down to the wire. Alright, um... I mean, is, is your last card Veil of Summer? I'm going to just cast this now. Because if they have it, they win this one. Alright, back up to 24 life. There's more. I guess this is going to be a Blood Braid. I know. Okay, it is uh, another big boy. Alright, so I take 7. And next turn I'll take 11. I have a little bit of time, but I, I need to draw a banger. That's a, that's a banger. Now, there, the Noble Hierarchs can still attack. Oh, but this card is good. Alright. So my opponent will now be on a four-turn clock. Or, sorry. My opponent now has a four-turn clock, rather than, like, the two-turn clock that they were on. Yeah, Cascade away. Take cards out of your deck. All right, Chalice on zero, sure. Uh, isn't it strictly incorrect to cast that, though? Because it takes one more card out of your deck. And, we're, we're, like, if, if I miss on stuff, we're definitely in the one card in deck matters scenarios, especially because of, like, Hedron Crabs. All right, I will take five. Yeah, speak of the devil. There's a Hedron Crab. So there's mill three. We'll choose you. We'll save targets and always yield to that. So now I will fetch. I need to grab a swamp with this one. And then pollute a delta with the next one. I, sorry, I need to grab watery grave with the next one so that I actually have a valid target. GG's. I was uh, definitely sweating that one there. So now we're up to 3-1 and one in the league, so we've guaranteed our money back. Let's see if we can uh, make this a 4-1. Deck feels great so far. Okay, so my opening hand here has one redraw in Visions of Beyond, and then I have double Tasha's Heinous Laughter, which mills for some number of cards. I think I'm just going to keep this hand. I think in game one, before I expect there to be any, you know, hate for mill, I'm... Uh, each opponent. Thank God. Okay. Cool. All right. Um. Shit. That that is gonna make life harder. I don't. I don't know what my opponent is playing. I definitely don't know what my opponent is playing. What's the backside of this? Destroys a creature. I think I'm just gonna grab an island with this one, assuming that I can get a tapped watery grave later. All right, that's, that's not what I'm looking for. All right, Watery Grave will not pay. Also, if my opponent's deck has Leyline of Sanctities in it, the Tashas aren't actually going to mill all that much on average, are they? Okay. I don't know what's going on, but I don't assume that it's fair. I assume there's some way or other to cheat the system and play the flip sides of these for free or a discounted rate. But I, I don't know what legal ways there are to do that currently. Four fucking cards! Alright. So if there's Narcomoebas, maybe this is some, like, oops all spells variant. Alright. Yeah, so I guess I just got, like... Oh yeah, are you just gonna pass the turn? Oh my god, they just passed the turn. That's super dope. Okay, cool. So I can just fetch Fatal Push and Tasha's guess let's do that off of this. No, I should have done that off Flooded Strand. Probably doesn't matter at this point, though. 
Alright, so blow that up. We'll play another Tasha's. Hmm. Oh, yeah, so Tasha's doesn't feel good in this matchup. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. I, I think I should give up on the mill plan and just like fucking hit my opponent in the face with Loras. I, I I think that's what I'm doing. Alright. Yeah, I I mean that's that's fine. Do do your thing. Show me how your combo works. Okay. Alright. So I take some creeping chill damage. You get an Arc Amoeba. Yeah, am I actually not dead? It sure doesn't look like I'm dead. Sword of the Meek? Interesting. Yeah, because I milled an Arc Amoeba and a Vengevine and a Creeping Chill. Yeah. Um. Thank you. Okay. Alright. So. <laughs> Soul Guide Lantern is each opponent, right? Exile each opponent's Grieger. So this gets around a ley line. Propane Memento is also probably a beating. Yeah, okay. I, I assume I sort of metamorphose into like this hateful deck that just tries to stop my opponent from winning. <clears throat> Crypt Incursion is quite good, I think. But again, ley lines. Also, I don't know if my opponent has like a transformational pivot plan. All right, so let's let's play this stuff, and then I'm gonna need to fuck blah, blah blah cut four more cards. I think the vast majority of the time, fatal push doesn't actually end up working. Like my opponent like played the thing in past, but they could have played around that and frequently will. I I think accordingly, I'm going to just get rid of the fatal pushes, <clears throat> and then. Like, Tasha's is just, like, not good. Ruin Crab is each opponent. Hedron Crab targets. Hmm. Okay. Import out one of those. Alright. I'm still in a configuration where Luris is legal. I, th I think a lot of times I end up killing with Luris. Or I end up winning via concession because my opponent tries to go off and it doesn't work. Um, I wish this hand had another colored mana, but I'm going to keep this. Okay, we do have a ley line. Okay. Sure. Okay, with double surgical available, I think it's okay to take turn one to play Profane Memento rather than play Soul Guide Lantern. Yeah, I think so. I think I am going to shock myself with a Watery Grave, though. I want to leave the possibility of playing... Um, Drown in the lock next turn if I draw a proper land. I got some long pauses from my opponent there that I don't know how to parse. Maybe they were reading Profane Memento. Because I know I had to read that card the first time I saw it. I had no idea what it was. Okay. Um, Fractured Sanity doesn't really do anything for me. I guess I can cycle it. Yeah, I, I can cycle it and then maybe surgical something if I need to. I believe my opponent is uh, currently dealing with something else based on a message I just got in the chat, so I think they're uh, they're multitasking right now. Okay, things are happening now. Okay, they started to tap a land and then didn't do anything with it. I will just cycle this, see if I can hit my next land drop. <clears throat> All right, uh, there is Balustrad Spy. Get a little bit of life and a crab. I think I am good with using a Surgical Extraction on a Blue Strud Spy here. Pay life for it as well. Double Packed. Alright. So basically, I'll need three pieces of interaction to beat them. I should, I should take a picture of this. This game is probably going to be grindy enough that this stuff matters. Alright. So... Oh, there's a Salvage Titan. Interesting. I love that. Okay, so there are Goblin Charbelters in the deck. Instead of Blue Strad Spies now. Do I want to Soul Guide Lantern? Use that to draw a card? I don't think so. I think I'm going to play my Crab out. I would like to hold up... Hmm. It's going to be hard for me to actually, like, counter... 
a brown in the lock. Or sorry, it's going to be hard for me to counter a Goblin Char Belcher because of double Pact of Negation. But maybe that's not actually true? Question mark? Because if they Pact, they'll die to paying for that. Oh wait, no, I guess they can just like activate it in the upkeep. One mana to draw a card. One mana to draw a card. Yeah. Alright, uh, super happy with this. So I'm playing this on untapped 100% of the time. Yes, I will pay the life. You have hex proof, so I guess that means I am milling myself. Yeah. Am I casting Tasha's hideous laughter? Doing so is bad against Belcher, but is good against a lot of the rest of the plan. I am going to go ahead and cast this. Actually, I'm going to Field of Ruin on one of these. That keeps the Char Belcher from getting into play in the first place. Pick up an island here. Mill myself, because I don't have a choice about it. Just let's pop that out too. And I will probably end up just cycling this Soul Guide Lantern. Question mark. All right. Uh, oh, just uh, just hard casting Narcomoeba. I mean, I respect it. Yeah, maybe I just need to keep up Drown in the Lock for a Belcher effect. I need to get the other crab. Thank you. I mean, just literal, literal perfect draw there. I have I have the graveyard covered three different ways. I have a hard cast to Char Belcher covered. Although my opponent can start just paying for packs, huh? That is awkward. I think I'm supposed to cycle this now and try to hit a land drop. Oh, actual factual counterspell is very good. Um, I can Snapcaster Visions to draw a card and create something that can attack. Um, I don't think that's good. I'll do it at my opponent's end step, though. This game has a lot of not casting spells. I, I did not expect this game to play out this way. Also, have I been holding up Drown in the Lock when my opponent only has three cards in Graveyard? And it doesn't actually counter Belcher anyway? I think I have. I had to do a quick check just to make sure Visions of Beyond was an instant. I was pretty sure it was. Alright, Snapcaster. Target Vision. And cast it. This is, this is just simply a cantrip at this point. Okay. Cool. So now Drown in the Lock is on. I should really fetch in response to my Hadron Crab trigger. I could, like, mill my own lands. Yeah. I think I'm okay with it, though. Ah, the Creeping Chill. Do I want to Surgical those now? That's not bad. I Surgical like Creeping Chills and Venge Vines. Yeah. I think I do that with life as well. Okay, my opponent has triple Pact of Negation. Okay. I wonder if my opponent was supposed to Pact that. They might be all in on Char Belcher, though. Like an island here. See what happens with this. Oh my god, I milled a pact. So I can now surgically extract a pact and get the three for one. Okay, that's good. See if my opponent blocks there. Okay, so do I do it now? If I surgically extract the pact, they can pact it, and then I can just counterspell it. I think so. Oh, they're just letting me have them. All right, got him. I will drown that in the lock. One, two. All right, and we have gotten the concession. What an interesting game. I really enjoyed that. Um, this deck is great. Let's uh, let's get it back up on screen. All right. Um, so ultimately, what are our thoughts on Peter's list here? I I think this deck is great. Um, I'm very happy with how this deck is is put together. It feels like I have a fantastic set of tools that is a little hard to attack, and we managed to win through a decent amount of hate as well. Um, I made a decent number of errors while piloting and still ended up with a 4-1, a and that's a, that's a good sign to the strength of the deck. 
I don't know how I feel about the Singleton Snapcaster Mage and Singleton Counterspell. They're not bad, but the Snapcaster didn't do a lot of work this league, and the things that I really want to Snapcaster back are expensive, and that means that like five Snapcaster Mage is, you know, five mana to do what I want it to do in a lot of cases. But the first Snapcaster might be better than, say, the fourth Surgical or the, you know, the next Fatal Push or something, so I think that's reasonable. As far as the sideboard goes, I liked the options that I had access to. I never felt like I didn't have cards. There were, there were some cases where I wasn't sure whether or not I was supposed to sideboard certain things or how I was supposed to go about it, like in terms of exact logistics, uh, but I didn't feel like I was missing anything. Um, the, the things that Modern Horizons 2 brought to this deck are very powerful, and that was true in Legacy, and even more so in Modern, where the card pool is weaker. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button. That helps me out a lot. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing for Legacy Modern and Vintage content five days a week. And if you're really enjoying my content and you want to try out this deck or get your own deck on the channel, that information is always available in the video description. Have a great rest of the day.